Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll be installing an old school moon visor on the 89S10. I just love stuff like this. It was made by Lund Industries and they don't make them anymore, but there were two different versions of their visor. The sun visor was just the plain old fiberglass visor, while the moon visor had lights all the way across. I bought this as a new old stock kit. It has everything I need to do the install. It was manufactured back in 1997 and was still in the original packaging before I took it all out for this video, which is very cool. It's getting kind of hard to find stuff like this, but it's got everything I need from the hardware to the gaskets, light bulbs, also very detailed instructions. There's one page for the visor itself and the other one is for lighting. I just think these visors look super cool on the old square body trucks, especially S10s. So I'm looking really forward to getting this on. The visor is going to screw directly into the roof here. It extends out over the windshield a little bit and the lines are designed to follow the contours of the body. So it's going to be pretty sweet. At the end of the video, I'll also give you guys a closer look at some other body parts I've been test fitting lately, including the bed cover out back and the two inch cowl hood. Before we get started, I'd like to extend a big thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of their support. Don't forget, if you go to O'ReillyAuto.com, take advantage of the exclusive discount code SOBKYLE20, which gets you 20% off of purchases of $100 or more. I also wanted to show you guys this right quick. On the back of the instructions is a diagram that shows all of the different types of truck accessories they offered. Like, look at this stuff. Little tails that came off the cab, dually flares, I mean, the running boards, just all sorts of stuff. That's wicked. All right, I've got some tape. Now let's start getting this thing fitted. The tape is gonna help hold down the visor while I do the initial alignment. I have to make sure the visor lines are gonna be flowing with the roof line of the truck. I gotta check the distance between the visor and the windshield, and of course, make sure everything is level. Once all of that is done and everything looks good, it can be taped down fully. Then I'll move on to drilling the holes. Like I said, one of the measurements I need to double check is the distance that the visor sits away from the top of the windshield. More specifically, it's from the front mounting point. So if I look at this chart right here and find 89S10, it says the front mounting holes need to be an inch and three eighths away from the top of the windshield and to look at diagram two for the installation, which is this right here. So those are the mounting holes I'm talking about. They need to be an inch and three eighths away from the top of the windshield. That will put everything in proper alignment. The main line of the visor will follow the line of the roof and it will look fantastic. There's also a specific, um, you know, screw sequence for the self-tapping screws. So I'll double check that measurement and then we can start getting this thing affixed. I was kind of having a tough time using a traditional tape measure because there's not a whole lot of room underneath the visor. So I ended up just taking my measuring caliper, I put it out to an inch and three eighths and used the little pointy end to get up in there and it worked out pretty good. Turns out I had the visor sitting a little bit too far down on the first measurement. So I undid the tape, slid it back up over the roof a little bit. Now the measurement is great. So I got a little bit more tape back on this time to really hold it in place. I'm gonna do one more visual check and put my level on it. If everything works out, I can start drilling some holes. Looks good to me. This thing fits really well. I was wondering if I was gonna have to do any trimming or sanding on the edges and stuff, but nope. The edges of the visor fit right alongside the cab and that's the same on both sides. It really can't get much better than that. Now here comes the stressful part, drilling into the roof. So eighth of an inch holes, three quarters of an inch deep. There's also a specific sequence for these self-tapping screws. You do the outside upper edges first, the front middle ones, the rear middle ones, 
and then uh, right there, the bottom edge is last. That is so sweet. It really makes the truck look more aggressive. I am so happy there weren't any issues installing this thing, especially with having to drill into the body. Everything lines up great. It's solid as a rock. Very, very cool. At this point, they said to go ahead and paint the visor to match the truck, but the truck still has to be painted, so I'm not really at that point yet. I still want to figure out the wiring and where I'm going to route things, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with the installation so we can see this thing light up. The reason why they tell you to go ahead and paint it is that the wiring and all the finishing touches is supposed to be done afterwards, but when it comes to putting the gaskets on the visor and all of that, I'm basically just going to skip all of that. All I want to do is string up the lights get the lenses in place and the holes drilled for them and then the hole drilled in the roof to where I can bring the wire harness in and connect the power to make sure everything works. So this kit came with all of the 194 series bulbs. I may end up not using these and uh, running LEDs, I'm not sure yet, but here are all of the screws for the wire harness, the lenses, and the necessary drill bit to get it all done and here are all of the gaskets. Again, I'm not gonna be putting that stuff on right now. I'll wait till it's painted, but we can at least see how it all looks when it's done. I think the easiest point of entry for the light wiring is gonna be in the roof right above the windshield, somewhere around there, to where I can bring it in through the interior, down the A-pillar, and connect it to the stock headlamp wiring. This is the back of the headlamp switch. I looked through my electrical schematics to verify what does what, and this brown wire right here powers up the directional lights and the side marker, so this is the wire I'm gonna end up tapping into. This kit came with these snap connectors, which should make tapping into this pretty simple. I'm really not sure when I'm gonna be able to start doing bodywork and paint content on this thing, but as insignificant as it may seem, I went ahead and put a good amount of primer in each of the holes that I drilled just so the bare metal has some corrosion resistance. I've also marked out the hole I'm gonna drill to run the light wiring into the cab. It's important to remember anytime that you're drilling into a cab or a blind area or whatever you wanna call it, make sure there's no electrical connectors back there. This is a good safe area because there's one connector or wire that's running up here and the cross starting about there for the reading lamps built into um, the rear view mirror. So good safe spot, we'll go ahead and drill it and run those wires in. All of the lights are in, now I just need to hook up power and ground. All of the wires hanging underneath the visor will be cleaned up later on, of course, when I install this thing for the final time. The kit actually comes with these rubber channels that you stick underneath the visor. You basically peel them apart and tuck all of the wires in there so nothing's hanging down and it all stays secure out of the way. I ended up mounting the ground wire on the back of the A-pillar just so it's out of the way. Like you guys saw earlier, this is the little connector I'll be using to tap into the factory wire to power up the lights on the visor. Of course, it's just in time for rain. If you look in that little hole to the right, that's where the factory wire passes through, and then the side with the block is where I insert the wire for the um, 
the visor. So you clamp down on this little metal piece right here and it pierces the sheathing of both wires and creates a connection. So you don't have to strip and solder and all of that. It's just an easy way to connect wires. Oh my gosh. I swear the weather's been crazy today. It rains super hard for like two seconds and then nothing. Anyway, this is the connector before I clamp it all down. So you see the visor wire there, the factory wire there, the factory wire continuing down to the plug. So clamp that down and then move that piece over. That's the cover and then we're done. Now the real question is whether or not it works. All right, most of it worked. That was kind of weird why that one bulb wouldn't come on. I checked to see if the bulb was bad. It was not, so I did a little bit of detective work and a big thanks to my buddy Joe for walking me through how to use the multimeter. I still need some practice with this thing, but I was able to figure out what wires do what, what terminals do what, and through a process of elimination, long story short, I realized that that socket had no ground. It's supposed to have two powers, one input, one output, and two negatives, input, output. So the first bulb powers this one, and then this one powers that one. That's just not the case here. The power connections are actually correct. So power wire going here and then off to that. But this ground wire is supposed to go in there. Instead, it bypasses that and goes to the third bulb. So we have the ground wire continuing, yada, yada, yada. But then we have a power wire coming off of the fourth bulb and that's going into one of the ground inputs or whatever on the second plug. And then the other supposed to be ground input is going to the power input, output, whatever. It's, it's all messed up. So I'm gonna redo this right quick and, and see if that fixes it. Now let's see if they all work. That's what I'm talking about. We have one, two, three, four, five. All of them are working. You see the wires that I had to cut and reconnect to make everything flow the way it needs to go. Yes! That's just too cool right there. The last thing I want to do with the visor for now is just to temporarily install the um, lenses so I can see what the finished product would look like. I'm not going to screw them in like you're supposed to. You're also supposed to screw in the sockets at the back um, just because, like I said earlier, there's gaskets that need to be installed everywhere. You just rip them off this piece. They're already cut out. But since everything has to come apart later for bodywork and paint, there's no point in doing all of that right now. I just want to see what it looks like. Um, and here's a picture of what those wire channels look like. Stick them on, put the wires in, keeps it all nice and tidy. I love that so much. One more thing I almost forgot. When painting the visor, you also paint these little black caps that come in the kit. When you're putting it all together for the final time, these caps cover up the screws. There's a couple holes pre-drilled in this side where when everything is all said and done, you could put in this little Lund emblem. I am beyond happy with how this has turned out. So, so neat. Now, let me get my mess cleaned up and I'll give you guys a look at the hood and some other stuff I have planned for up here as well as the bed cover. I briefly showed off the bed cover at the end of a previous episode, but I recently got it all clamped down so I can show you how it attaches and how it works. Over the years, there were all sorts of different types of bed covers available for these trucks, from camper shells to flush mount, soft covers, hard covers, so on and so forth. I have always liked this one that was made by ARE, and I got really, really lucky to find someone selling it online. 
The reason I like this is that it basically converts the bed into a pretty practical trunk by blocking out all of the elements. And it gives you an added bit of security because there's a lock right there. I do have the original key for it, which is nice. When it's all locked down or when it's closed, it also prevents the tailgate from opening. So that's really cool. And if I decide to travel with the truck, you can throw luggage back there. Again, don't have to worry about weather. Don't have to worry about people stealing your stuff. And when you go to open it, there's a pair of gas charged struts that do all the work for you. That's what I was talking about where it basically converted the bed to a trunk. I really, really like that. This is probably my favorite thing I bought for the truck so far. The cover just attaches to the bed sides with three like C-clamp type things and underneath the rails there's some like weather stripping foam type stuff so you're not sitting at you know metal directly on your paint and scratching it all up. If you look at the other side, up top, the locking mechanism, very nice. If you didn't know already, and this is another reason why I really like this particular cover, those three lines emulate the lines in the hood. So you have the same peak, the same little cutouts right there. So the styling just kinda, kinda matches all the way across the truck. And that brings us to the cowl hood. Ever since I started getting into S10s, I've always wanted to put one of these on an S10 just because they look so good. This hood is actually steel. It's a two inch rise and it looks awesome from the inside. That scoop is just so sick. The overall quality of the hood seems really good too. It's a good mark hood if anybody's wondering. And I like how the rise extends back over the cowl panel a little bit. When I was redoing the core support, I decided to delete the prop rod and at some point, probably after all the body work is done, install a set of gas charged struts to open and close the hood. That way you don't have that big rod sticking right here. It's easier to open the hood. I did a video of installing a similar kit on the 89 240SX a while back if anybody's curious as to what I'm talking about. but. That's going to be a nice upgrade when I ever get around to doing it. One more thing I wanted to mention in case anybody watching this video was interested in getting one of these hoods. The cowl actually does not give you extra clearance in the engine bay. The bracing is similar to the stock hood, but the metal above the bracing is where you get the extra space. So if anything, it just provides an extra avenue for heat to escape out of the engine bay. Well everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like below and if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because there's a lot more content where that came from. Also, if you subscribe, make sure that notification bell is selected so you can get properly notified of all the new uploads. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.